Hi guys, welcome to video number eight of the 1913 Duesenberg Slacking Cart build. If you've been following along, you know I'm building this with and for my dad. Uh, this is going to get a hydraulic brake system by MCP. We got that from BMI Carts. Uh, this is a fairly expensive braking system. It's about 300 bucks. It's a master cylinder here on the side. Um, this is uh, probably overkill for most cycle carts. My dad really wanted really good brakes. Not sure this is, um, the tires are so small, really good brakes. All you do is leave black marks. But anyway, we're doing the better braking system. Some of the other guys have them and work well. Uh, mechanical brakes also work fine. So if you want to do mechanical brakes, some of the stuff we're going to talk about may not apply, but the basics are still there. So uh, let's show you how we did it. In a previous video, I showed you how we installed the caliper and the caliper bracket. Uh, and I do encourage you to go ahead and get the bracket that comes with it. It's a small investment and worth it. It makes the install a whole lot easier. Um, got this from BMI Carts. There's their information. Here's the part numbers we used. Um, so there's the information, the order, the caliper bracket, and the hydraulic brake kit. I will recommend go ahead and get an extra length of this, at least another 8 feet. It takes about 8 feet to get this from the front of the cart to the back of the cart. And you'll need two runs of it. And it comes with this MPC, or I keep saying MPC, MCP master cylinder. This thing is really nice. Uh, this is your hydraulic master cylinder reservoir. So when we install this, we're using these clevis, we're just going to get a, of course, a safety wire there. These clevis pins, so you can remove this, so you can fill it easily. So that's the idea behind that. Um, let me go over with some of the hardware. So these pedals are standard kind of go-kart pedals. These are obviously been painted. These are used pedals off the uh, kind of the donor cart we picked up. And the way you attach this, or really, the way I attach it is with these yokes. So we have to thread a piece of rod. This is a quarter inch rod. It's a quarter inch. Uh, the thread pitch is 28 because that's what the thread pitch this requires. So you'll need a tool kind of like this Craftsman set, a quarter 28. If you can see that, quarter 28. And this tool here it makes pretty quick work of it. Just use a vise to hold the hold the thing in place. You need to clamp it down really hard, otherwise you end up using, losing a, or leaving a bunch of little marks in it, which is not a big deal. It's just kind of ugly. Um, in talking with some other guys, in particular Kelly Wood, hey, hey thanks Kelly for all your advice on this. Um, he recommended some pedal setups so that we get full stroke on this as you pull this back. It goes it, it, As you push this, it pulls back. Let me actually let me set this down and hook that back up a second. Okay, so clamp that down to the workbench. So as you push your pedal, you got full stroke. That's where it bottoms out. So the pedals come with a little kind of a stopper. So when you mount it, you make sure you leave enough material here for it to actually stop. So it doesn't bind or go to travel too far. I don't think you need any springs on this. And it seems like there's an internal spring that returns this back and you press it and it returns back on its own. So pretty simple. Uh, your gas pedal, same thing. It's got this little stopper for forward travel. Uh, we're using a rod. I, made, I just took a quarter inch rod, bent it, and I ran the same thread count that excuse me quarter by 28 on here and on uh down here actually this is a quarter 20 down here excuse me um so this this right here this rod this gives you your, thr your throttle pedal and this is where you're going to hook the cable to we'll show you how to do that when we get it actually installed in the car in another video but this may look a little goofy because i've got this thing on top of this half inch rod um the reason i did this is because the pedals need a one inch spacer there's a on the pedal assembly itself there's like a space there it really needs a one inch piece of uh, metal to hook to on both sides and I had to elevate this side so that number one I could master mount the master cylinder but also keep it in line as best we could so it didn't interfere with them with the cap if I put the pedal down low this would be running uphill and it would it would interfere with this so this is just the solution I came up with the solution for your build may be different and I gave it enough room so this goes up against the front of the foot box and this won't touch it so as this presses forward you see it does not come in line with the wall so as we press forward, it doesn't impact anything. Um, drill some holes to mount it in the floor, and we'll use big fender washers underneath the aluminum floor to hold it. So this is not going to be a very long video. This is pretty simple. It's just showing you what, how we built it. And, and I didn't stop to videotape it. I just built this thing. Uh, let me show you the plate I used. And I think MPC, or I keep saying MPC, MCP, I believe, has a bracket. But I made my own bracket, just a piece of uh, quarter-inch steel welded here and then use the master cylinder itself to find the, the holes. And you see this isn't straight, but it doesn't really matter. This could actually be much smaller. It doesn't need to be nearly this big for mounting that. Um, one thing I need to keep in mind is the little bellows down here. Um, the light's bad there, sorry. There's a rubber bellows here. 
and it sticks out a little bit past the aluminum frame, so you have to clearance the back side of the frame. So I just took a grinder and ground that out, and you have to mount this up a little bit again so that this clears the bottom. If you look under here, it, it, uh, it won't hit the floor, hopefully, as it goes in and out. That's just a dust cover, I think. So the way this works for the, your lines, these little things unscrew, and there's a little brass fitting in there, and it's in here. And you use your plastic line, it comes with the kit. And I'm not gonna assemble it right now, I'm not gonna put the lines on until much later. Um, but this goes in, I can't hold the phone to show you, but it, anyway, this goes into this hole, and that goes inside there, and then you screw that into there. And it, cl it clamps it in place so it doesn't move around. But like I said, you need an extra eight foot of this material. This is Airlite Nyloflow Pressure Tubing, type 3 16 um, so we're going to get some more, uh, Napa carries this, apparently, same thing, so you can get it from Napa, or you get it from MPC, excuse me, MCP, <laughs> good lord. Um, so here is the part number for the clevis pins I used, these are the clevis pins, these little deals here, and I cut these off and then re-drilled them, I used this tool right here to re-drill them for the, uh, for that little hole right there, because the ones that come from Ace don't have that. I think you can actually get these already the right size from M MCP, from BMI carts. If you look on their, their, their list, you'll see this part. And I think they even sell these as well. And actually, they're a little bit cheaper. These are like 6 or $7, and I think on their side, it's, it's a few dollars less. So if you buy it all from one place, it might be a little cheaper. Uh, this tool is pretty good. I think I got this from SoCal or, or um, Summit Racing. So the bolt puts in here, this is designed for really safety wires and bolts. So the bolt comes in here, you see it kind of comes out. Then you take this little, uh, hang on a second. So that looks like a little um, Allen wrench head bolt, but you see there's a hole in the center of it. So you just screw that into the hole above the proper size. And that clamps this in place so it doesn't slide back and forth. And then you take a 560 or 564th drill bit and drill down in there. It comes with drill bits, and the drill bits are hiding inside of this hole. There's a little access hole here on the side. Uh, but this is dying for putting safety wires. So if you've got bolts going to safety wire or cotter pin or whatever, uh, this is a great tool. It'll even do your, I think it goes up to 5 ace. So you can actually do an axle bolt on this one here if you wanted to. If you have a 5 ace axle or any of, the, your, any of your bolts for your suspension or your brakes, maybe be a good idea to do that. So it's kind of a nice tool to have. And so I started talking about the uh, clevis pin. So that's the clevis pin I got. It was two inches long and I cut off about an inch of it. And that's the part for the yoke end, quarter by 28. That's this part right here. So the rest of this is all pretty much just designed to wait that, that works for you guys. Uh, the thing I'm going to do next, I'm going to go ahead and mount this in the cart and then I'm going to make a dead pedal. Okay, so working on the dead pedal, I decided to use it an inch and a half by inch and a half aluminum, bent at a 90. And then I decided I wanted some little reliefs in there to kind of make it look cool. So I remembered I had this fastener uh, dimple maker. Basically this is for making the uh, dimples for a uh, quick turn fastener or Zeus fastener. Uh, this is where it is for Moroso. And uh, all you do is you drill a hole, pretty simple. Then over top of this, you put your hole. Oh, sorry. I don't have enough hands to do this. You put this tool through the hole like that in there, hit it with a hammer, and it puts that dimple in there. So there's, a relief on this side and there's a relief on that side and this one's got two different ones it's got a deeper one on one side and a, a shallower one i went with a shallow one on uh, this side here the shallow side and that i think that looks pretty cool it gives it a little more stiffness and then when i had it installed i realized my foot was slipping off so i decided to put a little edge if you can see that little bit of a bent edge all along this outside i just keep the foot from slipping off and all i did was i took a piece of steel mounted to the workbench I clamped this down and then just kind of went gently down the edge with a hammer. And just, and just kind of massage that metal a little bit around the edge of that piece of steel. So that worked pretty good. And then I rubbed the whole thing with a piece of uh, steel wool to kind of give it a brushed aluminum look. So uh, I'll show you what it looks like when it's installed. Man, oh man, that turned out cool. Um, I really like those holes in there. It looked really cool. Um, so I just set this up. This is about 10 inches tall, like I said, from the floor. And it's designed to where your foot can rest over here while you're driving and not interfere with the brake pedal. So the brake pedal is independent of it. You can easily slide over under the brake pretty simply. So the idea is to have somewhere to kind of plant your body because while you're driving, uh, most of the time you're just on the gas. And if the left foot is just floating around over here, you have no way to kind of plant yourself in the car. You kind of plant yourself against the car this way. And then when you need to brake, 
move your foot over. So you can even drive with one foot if you really wanted to like this. Kind of. Um, some people might decide that's more natural like a regular car. But uh, anyway, so that's what that dead pedal looks like. Pedal assembly is in bolted in and installed. Pretty simple. Um, like always, keep it simple. And we'll rivet this in when the final assembly comes along. There's a few extra holes here for later, but this is plenty strong now. It's not moving around it at all, and uh, my foot doesn't feel like it wants to slide off very easily. So call that a job well done. Appreciate it. So I think we'll call that the end of this video. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and uh, find us on Facebook. I can answer any questions you might have about any of this stuff we're doing. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.